Assalamu alaikum. We will talk about cranial nerves. Our objectives for each cranial nerve, you should know the origin or the deep nuclei. I mean the deep origin of the cranial nerve. I want to know this cranial nerve is either motor, sensory, or parasympathetic origin. Second, the attachment to the brain stem or the attachment to the brain in the first two cranial nerves. It's exit from the skull. The ganglia for the sensory and parasympathetic nerves, and lastly, the distribution or the function of this cranial nerve. First, we will talk about the olfactory nerve. The olfactory nerve is pure sensory nerve, it is special sense. So, all the sensory nerves begin in the receptors. The receptors of olfaction present here in the roof of the nasal cavity. So, the olfactory nerve begins from the receptors of olfaction in the roof of the nasal cavity. Then the fibers of these receptors ascend upward through the roof of the nasal cavity through the cribriform plate of the ethmoid bone. Cribriform plate of the ethmoid bone. Cribriform means it is pierced by the Fibers of the olfactory nerve. These fibers pass from the cribriform plate of the small pool okay, to enter the cranial cavity, to enter the anterior cranial cluster. And these fibers in the hair, in this, this is the olfactory pulp. Like this, this is the olfactory pulp. Olfactory pulp. Olfactory pulp. Then the olfactory pulp forms the olfactory tract. Olfactory tract. Olfactory tract. And lastly, the olfactory tract divided into medial and lateral stria, stria to end in the olfactory cortex. So, what about the olfactory nerve? It's a type of special sensory nerves carry small sensation. Its origin originates in the receptors or olfactory receptors present in the roof of the nasal cavity. How it enters the skull? It enters the skull via the clipry form plate of the small tube. Cribri form plate of the small thing. Then it forms out in the, in the olfactory pulp. Olfactory pulp. And then after the olfactory pulp, give the olfactory tract. Olfactory tract to reach the olfactory cortex. To reach the olfactory cortex. Okay. The second cranial nerve is the optic nerve. Also, the optic nerve is a pure sensory nerve that is responsible for vision. So it begins here in the receptors in the retina. Begins in the receptors in the retina. This is the retina, the inner coat of the eye, the retina. The retina contains ganglion cell layers, ganglion cell layers having the receptors for light. So the optic nerve begins in the retina. Then the optic nerve passes here through the optic canal or optic foramen passes through the optic foramen to enter the cranial cavity as the optic nerve. This is the optic nerve. After entering the cranial cavity, the optic nerve goes to the optic side, to the other side, here, like this, forming the optic chiasma. Then the optic chiasma forming the optic tract. Optic tract, so this is the optic nerve coming from the retina, enters the cranial cavity through the optic foramen, cross with the other side as the optic chiasma, and then forming the optic tract. The optic tract reaches the salamus, reaches the lateral genicular body of the salamus, lateral genicular body of the salamus, and finally forming the optic radiation to form the occipital cortex. Occipital cortex. So, this is the optic nerve. The optic nerve, as we said, is a special sensory nerve, special sensory nerve responsible for vision. It originates from the soles in the retina, originates from the soles in the retina, from the ganglion cell layer in the region. Okay, it enters the skull via the optic foramen or optic canal. Optic foramen or optic canal. Okay, then it reaches the occipital cortex, occipital cortex after crossing the optic side, the optic side is the optic chiasma, then the optic tract, the optic tract reaches the lateral genital body, and then the optic radiation to reach the occipital loop or the occipital cortex. 
The third nerve that is responsible for special sense is the vestibulocochlear nerve, is number eight. Vestibulocochlear nerve. Vestibulocochlear nerve it is the eighth cranial nerve. We talk about the first cranial nerve, which is a special sensory olfactory nerve. The second cranial nerve, which is special sensory or pure sensory, is the optic nerve. This is the third special sensory nerve or pure sensory nerve, which is the vestibulocochlear nerve. And as we see, each sensory nerve begins in the receptor. From its name, it is formed of two parts, vestibular part and cochlear part. Vestibular part is responsible for equilibrium, balance, equilibrium or balance. And the cochlear part is responsible for hearing, hearing, okay? So we have two parts of the vestibular cochlear nerve and the both begins in the inner ear, begins in the inner ear. This is the inner ear, formed of two parts. This is the cochlea, cochlea responsible for hearing. So receptors of the cochlea, giving fiber to form the cochlear part of the vestibular cochlear nerve. This is the cochlear part of the vestibular cochlear nerve, okay? And this is the other part of the inner ear, which is the semicircular canal. Semicircular canals containing receptors, giving origin to the vestibular part. This is the vestibular part of the vestibular cochlear nerve. So the vestibular cochlear nerve has a form of two parts. Cochlear part beginning in the cochlea, and the vestibular part beginning in the semicircular canal. The both <clears throat> divisions unite together to forming the vestibular cochlear nerve, which enters the cranial cavity, enters the cranial cavity through this meatus, which is the internal auditory meatus. Internal auditory meatus. Internal auditory meatus. To enter the cranial cavity, to reach the brain stem or reach the bones. The cochlear nerve relay in the cochlear nuclei and the vestibular nerve relay in the vestibular nuclei. So this is the vestibular cochlear nerve, which is the third pure sensory or special sensory nerve. It is number eight, it is the cranial nerve, the eighth cranial nerve, formed of two parts, cochlear part beginning in the cochlea and the giving the cochlear division, vestibular part beginning in the semicircular canal and the giving the vestibular division, the both divisions enter the cranial cavity through the internal auditory meatus, internal auditory meatus to reach their nuclei in the bone. So the vestibular cochlear nerve, <clears throat> it's a function to maintain balance, equilibrium by vestibular part and immediate hearing by cochlear part. So it's consistent of two functional division, vestibular nerve and cochlear nerve. This pure special sensory nerve, pure special sensory nerve, okay? This nerve entering the skull through the internal auditory meatus. It enters the skull through the internal auditory meatus. So when it enters the skull, it passes the sufficient nerve to not score the pillow-bontine angle, the pillow-bontine angle, okay? So the vestibular cord, as we said, plays role in equilibrium and the associated function with the serpilla, which is the fecromedular group of the serpilla. And the cochlear nerve is responsible for hearing. Now we discuss three special sensory nerves, which is the first, second, and eighth cranial nerves. They are pure sensory and carry special sensation. Now I talk about the eye. This is the eye, okay? This is the eye pool, eye pool, and this is the muscles, muscles of the eye, called extrinsic muscles of the eye. We said first, the eye has optic nerve for vision. Now we will talk about the motor, motor supply of the eye. The eye is supplied by three cranial nerves. Six, three cranial nerves, oculomotor nerve, trochlear nerve, and abducental nerve. These three nerves supplying the extrinsic muscles of the eye. The eye has two groups of muscles. Two groups of muscles. Extrinsic, extrinsic means outside, outside the eye pool. This is the eye pool, the eye pool. We always move the eye pool in all directions. So we have muscles called extrinsic muscles of the eye to move the eye pool. You can move the eye pool up, 
down medially or laterally. This is done by these extrinsic muscles. And these extrinsic muscles are voluntary muscles and supplied by three cranial nerves, which are oculomotor, trochlear, and abdosent nerves. Also, this is another muscle present inside the eye pool. Inside the eye pool, they are called intrinsic muscles of the eye. Intrinsic means inside, inside the eye pool. These muscles responsible for movement of this pupil, pupil. So you can make pupillary dilatation involuntary, involuntary when you expose the two dark light or pupillary constrictions, constrictions. This is done involuntary when you expose the two very high light or straight light. So when you have a torch and direct it to the eye, this eye will do involuntary do pupillary constriction. So the intrinsic muscles of the eye is supplied by autonomic fiber, autonomic fiber, sympathetic and parasympathetic fiber. The parasympathetic fibers of the eye supplying these intrinsic muscles are carried by the ocular motor nerve, are carried by the ocular motor nerve. Okay. So what about the extrinsic muscles? We have six inter extrinsic muscles. Four, four passing straight like this, straight muscles. Straight muscles in four directions. So we have one muscle superior passing straight, so called superior rectus. The same inferiorly, one muscle passing straight inferiorly, so called inferior rectus, medial rectus, and this one lateral rectus. So we have a straight muscle called recti in the four direction. So we have four recti muscles. Also, there are other, there are two another muscle, two another muscle passing in oblique direction, oblique like this, oblique direction. One inferiorly called inferior oblique muscle, inferior oblique muscle D, and one superiorly. Look at this. This passes oblique, oblique like this. And this is called the superior oblique muscle. So we have six muscles, four recti and two oblique muscles. All these muscles supplied by the oculomotor nerve except two. The oculomotor nerve except two. The two are SO4, SO4 superior oblique muscle. This SO superior oblique, superior oblique muscle supplied by Four. four is the trochlear nerve. So the superior oblique muscle supplied by the trochlear nerve. Also, we have another muscle oblique one, this inferior oblique one. The other muscle not supplied by the trochlear nerve rather than the SO4 is LR6. LR6, this one. This is the lateral rectus. LR, lateral rectus, supplied by the abducent nerve, okay? So these muscles of the eye are divided into intrinsic and extrinsic muscles. The intrinsic muscle inside the eye controlling the pupillary side are supplied by autonomic nerve. 